With this pie, I like to serve an old-fashioned apple ketchup in addition to the pickles. It's really like an apple chutney. Here are the ingredients. Six large, firm, tart cooking apples, cored, not peeled, cut into eighths. One medium onion, finely minced. One cup white distilled vinegar. One half cup sugar. One half teaspoon black pepper. One half teaspoon ground cloves. One half teaspoon dry mustard. One half teaspoon cinnamon. One half teaspoon allspice. One half teaspoon salt. And one fourth cup prepared horseradish vinegar. That's the vinegar base, not the creamy horseradish. Now, cook the apples covered in water for about 15 minutes, and you have left the skins on because there's a great deal of pectin between the skin and the flesh of the apple. Then, after they have cooked 15 minutes, pray them in the food processor, and this is what it looks like, sort of like a deep pink applesauce. This isn't the most gorgeous ketchup in the world, but it's certainly very delicious. Then add all the rest of the ingredients, the onions, the vinegar, the sugar, and all these really great spices. Now, you know that biblical expression, comfort me with apples? I think I could be comforted very well indeed with this adaption of apples. And then the horseradish, with vinegar-based horseradish. Mm, that adds a wonderful tang to this. Now, heat this to a boil, reduce the heat to the lowest possible temperature, and simmer it uncovered for one hour or longer. Cool and refrigerate, and it does thicken up. This is a very fragrant, penguin condiment. It does resemble a dark, chunky applesauce, and it should be served as a relish with roast. Pork roast and ham and a meat pie immediately springs to mind. It has a lot more dash than tomato ketchup, but I don't think it would be good with French fries. Another dish that the servants might have prepared for the Vanderbilts to have served upstairs would have been barbecued pecans. Now, had I been invited to cocktails at the Vanderbilts, as were my favorite authors, Edith Wharton and Henry James, actually they were house guests, we would have enjoyed this next recipe, or so I like to think. Pecans are the regional nut of the South, and we find lots of them below the Mason and Dixon line. Here are the ingredients. One pound fresh whole pecan halves, one fourth cup vegetable oil, one third cup Worcestershire, three fourths teaspoon salt, eight dashes hot red pepper sauce. The first step on this is very interesting and in what makes it so effectively good. You place the pecans in a colander and rinse them under the kitchen faucet under very hot water. And then shake the colander and drain the nuts well. What you've done here is soften the outer surface of the nut so it really absorbs the uh, flavors that we're going to add and the seasonings. Then cover a jelly roll with aluminum, a jelly roll pan with aluminum foil. That just makes your cleanup a lot easier, and I'm certainly for that. Now transfer the nuts to the uh, foil lined pan, and you don't have to grease that at all. Hey, I've got a few left in there, and I don't want that. These are too costly, too wonderful. And then spread them out evenly like this with your hands. And now we're going to do the simple sauce, but it's a very effective one. In a small bowl, whisk together the oil and all this Worcestershire, the salt, and the hot red pepper sauce. And you can add a little more if you want to, if you like things really spicy. But this is a good blend right here. Then drizzle the nuts over, excuse me, drizzle the oil over the nuts. This is much easier than doing it in a big bowl and then toss right on the pan. You see you're saving a dish by doing the drizzle at this uh, stage of the game, right in the pan. Now the baking and the toasting will evaporate out a lot of the liquid of that sauce, just for the seasonings. You can double this recipe. In fact, I would really recommend it because it's so good. But if you do double, divide the nuts between two pans. In other words, don't two, put two pounds of nuts on one pan because you've got to toast these things and evaporate out the liquid. Now bake these at 300 degrees for 30 minutes, stirring them occasionally, and they'll be nicely browned when done. Drain them on paper towels, cool, and freeze until needed. Wasn't that easy? <laughs> now, this is really a munchie that's both rich and bold with its hot red pepper sauce. Make a double recipe. You're going to love it. Let's review what we did today. We took a final look at Biltmore, which is still privately owned and operated by the Vanderbilt family. It's certainly an awesome place. We made frizzled beef, an enticing breakfast or lunch dish, 
served with English muffins or hot biscuits. The savory minced chicken and pork pie, something similar to this, may have been served in Biltmore's kitchen. And our own homemade apple ketchup, sprightly seasoned with cloves and horseradish, good with any meats as a relish. And lastly, the zesty barbecued pecans with their blast of hot red pepper sauce are a snappy accompaniment to cocktails. When we were in the Vanderbilt kitchens, we couldn't help but notice the beautiful old bowls. You know, we've become so accustomed to plastic bowls and metal ones ourselves that the real old ones are a pleasure to our eyes. Mixing bowls are as old as a kitchen itself, and they're found in thousands of designs and many, many materials. This is a most rare wooden bowl. It's a, called a Windsor bowl, and note the band around the outside. And here we have the familiar rocking ham. The mottled bowl itself is always a popular uh, design for people's kitchens. This is yellowware and a special favorite of mine. I would like to use this for bread dough. This small green crockery bowl has an interesting pattern on the outside. It's like a green trellage pattern. That's a, a fancy word for trellis. And here's the favorite old blue and white spongeware. Our quilt today is the Courthouse Square, 1920. The basic shape with all the pieced work begins in the square or rectangle. Although these simple geometric shapes can be arranged in many ways, some arrangements proved so popular that they were immediately given names. And we know, of course, about the hole in the barn door. That's an example. And this one, too, which, as I said, is called Courthouse Square. So, until next time, Essen gut, eat good. The recipes from today's program are in Marsha Adams' companion book, Heirloom Recipes, Today's Favorites and Tomorrow's Treasures, available by calling 1-800-235-3000. This beautiful book contains over 300 pages of heirloom recipes collected from across the country. To order Marsha's book, call 1-800-235-3000, and please have your credit card ready when you call. A free copy of Marsha Adams' Heartland Journal newsletter will be included with the purchase of her book. A copy of today's program is available on home video for $25, which includes shipping and handling. Call 1-800-235-3000 for credit card orders, or send a check for $25 to the address on your screen. Be sure to include today's program number when ordering. A box set of all 26 programs in this series is available for $150. Call 1-800-235-3000 for credit card orders. Marsha Adams Kitchen is made possible by the Fremont Company, makers of Snow Floss and Frank's Kraut, from our family to your family. Vera Bradley Designs, creators of classic quilted cotton luggage, handbags, tableware, and clothing and the Altrista Consumer Products Company, marketers of a full line of food preservation products, including ball home canning products.